Good evening. Good evening. So this is Oscar speaking here. I'd like to thank you for being on the other side, spending the next hour here with me. Uh, we end with Melanie. Melanie is going to be our moderator. She's going to be texting on the other side. So feel free to make your questions. She's going to share the questions with me. I'm not seeing the chat, but I will be here to go through six different bottles of port, talk a little bit about the family, and uh, have some fun. Let's do it, Melanie. So first of all, maybe before you get into the ports, which are under this table, I will give you just a brief introduction about the location where we are. We are at my parents' cellar in São João da Pesqueira, and this is about uh, one, 1 1.5 kilometers, maybe a mile away from the winery. My three-year-old daughter is here with me upstairs, so I'm sure that at some point she's going to show up and uh, say I hopefully, hopefully hi and leave. Maybe she won't say that much. So I have this daughter, I have two other kids, um, I have also a sister, Claudia, who's the person that's uh, responsible for the winemaking of our ports. She's the, she would be the right person to be right here in front of the camera to talk to you about our ports, but she doesn't like that. She actually is on, on holidays this week, um, and that's why I'm here. We are a family, a small family business that support uh, white uh, growers and producers. We have 121 hectares of vines, and um, of those, we have about 20 under organic production, uh, white and red. Right now, we only have one uh, organic port on the market, but soon we'll have more. And um, what we do basically is to collect these grapes that we grow in this, uh, in this area of, uh, of uh, vines, bring them to the, our winery, when we have one winery, age the ports there at the winery and ship them to England, to Portugal, to 32 countries around the world. Um, most of our production is port, there is also uh, about one third which is wine regular still wine, white, rosé, red, maybe some of you are familiar with that. Well, um, if you have any other questions about the history, let us know. So fifth generation of producers, we started back in 1889, and um, we, are, um, we are now in a, in a we are kind of a small, mid-sized uh, producer. All this idea of the concept of the taste at home uh, with Oscar, started about uh, two months ago, I believe. Uh, this was in May. Tony Carter, the owner of um, Vintage Wine and Port, challenged me to do this. We get also a lot of input, uh, fantastic input from um, Alex Bridgman, the gentleman, a huge port lover uh, that uh, runs the big 45 tasting that happens in London in April. Unfortunately, this year didn't uh, took place, didn't take place because of the COVID. Hopefully, next year, it's a great event for um, fortified wine lovers. And um, so, together with the help of Alex, with Tony, we had a first tasting of uh, our ports uh, in May. We tasted uh, six different ports in two sessions, and uh, some of you asked for a white port tasting. We decided that that should be in summertime, so here we are today to taste four white ports, and then <clears throat> we also had a few extras, a couple of um, high-end ruby ports, a late bottle vintage, and also the just recently released vintage port 2018. So. We will start with the tasting. I will start maybe with a glass of water to help to clear my voice. And then I will go to the first bottle, which is going to be the Reserve White. You probably cannot see as um, such a small um, 
letters on the on the image but um, I will leave the bottle here just in case you can I don't know I, I cannot uh, I don't know if, if it's readable not now he's telling me that it's not readable no worries reserve white this is the youngest of the white ports that we are going to taste today so I'll get my water get yours and we'll start with the ports So you know what? Well, now it's interesting about white port <clears throat> is that about um, I would say a century ago, maybe a little bit less, one of the most preeminent um, <clears throat> merchants from the UK, Mr. Coburn, said that <clears throat> the first duty of port is to be red. So this showed a lot how the trade was looking into the white grapes. They were even forbidden to be planted. And um, it took, it took uh, several generations to start uh, growing these white grapes again. And it happened in the generation of my great grandparents when we did that in the family. And because it was so hard to sell uh, white grapes and white port, my ancestors were holding, keeping, aging the port in their cellars and they would drink it because there would be no one interested in buying. So we have a comfortable, generous uh, amount of white port, old white port aging in our cellar that you are all invited to visit and see um, whenever we are all allowed to travel again. But this one is not from, is not at old. We'll get there, but not yet. This, is, uh, this was produced by my sister already, was made by my sister. My sister has been in the company for 21 years. I have been in the company for uh, 11. So she is double my time in the company and experience. Let's open the, um, our bottle of port. I picked, uh, for today, I picked the pour, a regular port wine glass. Two months ago, uh, we served our, white, our ports in, uh, in regular wine glasses, bigger, wider. Those are very comfortable to get a lot of the flavors of our, our port. Typically, they are not what we use for port. Um, I suggest to never use something smaller than this. This glass size is probably the minimum that you should use for your port to get more of the flavors and the aromas coming out. The ports that I'm going to serve today, the whites are chilled. They're at about 12 degrees. The temperature outside in the Douro is now 33 degrees at 8 p.m. Um, I was out in the vineyards at uh, 3 p.m. and the temperature was 38. So if we don't chill our port, this would be like a, a soup. Good. Are there any questions, Melanie? Not yet. Feel free to make those questions, please. So this is... Um, eight-year-old white we can see that the, um, the color is already on the um, kind of a dark amber towards orange orange color then um, the aromas to me remind me of um, a, bit of, a bit citric like orange orange peel bit floral as well and um, we get this darker color because of the aging in, in oak. Oak is a key element to mature port. Red port can age for a long period of time in, in, in oak and it will develop um, a brown uh, brick color character that we call tawny. Tony style. Tony because of the owl that lives in, uh, in the UK and has um, um, brownish, light brown, um, brick color feathers. And it's exactly that color that the port develops and matures in oak. And it happens the same to this white port that was um, like light uh, gold color when it was produced about eight years ago. And now it's already getting very dark for what a, a white is. This is a sign of oxidation. There was some oxidation that uh, happens 
because of the aging in oak, the oxygen goes through the wood and um, slowly changes the color, the aromas and the flavors. In terms of color, it gets dark. The same that happens to your apple when you cut the apple, leave it on the table for 10 minutes and it starts getting brown. The same happens to port, but a very slow rate. The rate here is uh, extremely slow and that's why we need a long period of many years of aging our port in barrel to get it to the right character. Port is always um, about 18 to 20 percent, it's always 45. And the fortification is a process uh, by which we stop the fermentation of the sugars that we have in the grape juice and stopping them they will no longer be transformed in alcohol by the yeast but they will still they will stay as fructose as sweetness it doesn't mean that all sugar of the grape juice stays as fructose no we transform half of them so when the fermentation starts the yeast is going to start processing sugars into alcohol and as the time goes we will um, have the sugar level going down slowly every minute every second every hour is going a little bit lower and uh, after four or five days of harvesting the grapes and crushing the juice we get our port in conditions to be fortified with a with a brandy with a wine spirit and this fortification is going to is going to stop the yeast of processing the sugars into alcohol and that's when port is produced. The same procedure applies to Madeira, to Marsala, to Sherry, which are, the, um, together with port, the four famous fortified wines in the world. Last time, well, this is, a, I find it's delicious. It's, um, it's fresh with a citric taste, a bit, of the, um, a bit of the floral notes. Almost reminds me when we are out in the woods in the Douro and um, we get this um, Shteva, names that I don't, honestly I don't know in, um, in, in English, but um, you get a, a, a floral, um, almost like um, dry, uh, dry weeds. Uh, notes that I that I get in this um, in this reserve white. What's cool about wine in general is that we don't all have to have the same opinion about wine. We don't all have to agree on the description of the wine. We don't have to agree on uh, what's better and what's uh, not so good. Um, each one of us grew up in different places, in different locations, tasting different food, going to different fresh market, fresh food markets, uh, going to holidays to different places. So. We all build up your our senses in different ways, and some of the flavors, some of the aromas, give us a better um, touch more our heart than others. And walking out in the vineyards in the Douro is um, is always in my in my heart and in my memory. And I try to connect those flavors were to to the ports that I taste, because in the end these vines were growing in this same nature. Well, Frederick Blair. Fred, who was the moderator uh, two months ago, is a great um, is a great wine enthusiast and port enthusiast, and we asked him to give us some food suggestions. So here are they. For the reserve white, I suggest um, a, a simple um, a simple uh, dish to prepare, which is uh, prosciutto, or as we would call in Portuguese, presunto or jamón in Spanish with melon. This is a super summer um, uh, entree. It's uh, easy to, to prepare and um, I hope you get some of it um, for you because it's a, it's a great food pairing. Melanie, do you have any questions? Yes. We do. We have here. I think it's interesting for you to explain why was white part to start the Historically related to the fruit of was Jesse White. Jesse, that's a great question. So I'll tell you what happened back in 1756. 
that's the year that the Douro wine region is first demarcated, which means to regulate and to delimit. It was the first wine region in the world. At that time, in 1756, there were two wine regions that were already delimited, but not regulated. Tokai, beautiful, great wines in Hungary, and Chianti in Italy. And this was done by the King José or Joseph I, with um, the man in charge was uh, the Prime Minister was Marquise de Pombal, Marquise de Pombal. And one of the things that was happening in the past was that there was some adulteration of the wines, of the ports. The region produces full-bodied, intense, uh, dark color red ports. And neighbor to the Douro is a region which is known by the easy drinking, fizzy, super light wines, the Vino Verde, which you may also know as green wine. Great wine for, for the terrace, for the stay outside and drink like three bottles in, in an hour. And the grapes were coming to the Douro, and in some of cases they were coming from outside of the region, and with lighter, with not as good quality. So to preserve the quality of the port, it would be, it was important to make sure that the, the color, the concentration, the flavors were there when port was produced. And avoiding that white grapes were involved in winemaking was one of the decisions. So the king in 1756 forbade the use of white, of the, the plantation of white uh, varieties in the Douro, which means basically no white wine, no white port, and no white grapes being mixed into the red port. And this lasted over 200, uh, 17, 18, 19, 150 years. People in the Douro did never took too serious this decision. They thought that the white grapes would be good to soften the tannins of the reds and make port that would be more elegant and more soft at an early stage. So it would be common to mix a bit of the white grapes, maybe one, two, three percent in the fermentation tank that in the door we call lagar, which is an open tank in where people food thread the, the berries. And um, this way, with a bit of the white grapes, the red ports will get more soft. It's only in the beginning of the last century that the white grapes are allowed to be planted. And since then, people have been introducing more white grapes, but not in, um, in huge percentages. In my family, because we have one of the vineyards at a higher altitude, my great-grandparents thought that would be a good location, fresher, with a deeper soil, to produce uh, white grapes, and they would make white port, even if it was not very popular at the time. And um, so that that explains why port consumption is still so much around red. It's about 80% red and only 20% white port. To give you the figures for white wine in or for the wine in general, still wine. We get about 50% consumption of white wine, about 1% is rosé and 49% is red. So we have 50-50 white red, while port is 80 red, about 20% white. Hope I have answered your question, Jesse. Good. Are we ready for the second port? Well, let me just show you. This um, reserve white is presented to you on a 9 9 centiliter bottle. We also have it in this decanter. The decanter is a 75 centiliters and it comes with a, a box outside. So this is a port that vintage wine and port has in stock in case you want to purchase any of these ports. I'm going to show you all the um, all the all the f five ports in general that we have who are serving from this size that we have in regular sized bottles. Good. So next bottle, find your ten year old white, please. I will do the same.
So here's my glass. And here we have the 10 year old white. You can, I think you can read it. I think so, 10 year old white. Cool. 10 year old white. This is a special port for this uh, taste at home with a Husker. Why is it special? Because we don't have this port on the market. We, my sister made this blend for you. So we could compare it to the eight years old. It's something that in the future we want to we want to bring it to the um, to our assortment to have a portfolio of a ten year old ten years old white. It's not yet there. Well, let me get the eight year old glass so we can compare colors. Maybe you don't have it, you have drunk it, but it's okay, no problem. So one one of the the first thing that you can see is that. The 10 years old is a little bit cloudy. It's not totally clear. Why is that? Because it was not filtered. This is coming directly from the barrel, which is even more interesting. This is, would be a gas sample for you. Here I find a bit more of the um, of a, uh, almonds and maybe hazelnut notes. Not as much the citric taste that we had in the, um, the orange peel taste that we had in the reserve white, but more of a, a little bit drier and more nutty. This is a great port with um, smoked salmon. Smoked salmon, um, it's also something very easy to, to get. There's no excuses not to try this food pairing. And um, I think we can even see taste a little bit the, or, or, or um, smell the notes that the, the, the smoke notes are in this port. Where is the smoke notes? Where are the smoke notes coming from? When we make a barrel, we need to bend the staves, to curve them. So here we have the barrel. The staves would be straight as trees grow up straight out in nature. But to, to make the barrel, we need to bend them a little bit. And for this bending, we need to warm up the temperature of the oak to about 200 degrees. So the wood gets more flexible. There's a fire that is made inside of the barrel before we put the, the tops, the two tops. So imagine this barrel uh, sitting up with a, a small fire being made inside to warm up the staves. And then the coopers can bend the staves and put um, these iron rings around the oak to hold. While warming up the wood, the, the, um, the inner part of the oak that is going to be later in contact with the port is um, a little bit toasted. Because of the, both, uh, from the guy gets this toasted from the temperature and the smoke, and it's common to use some uh, smoke notes into port, especially when the oak is younger. And I think this is what we get here in this 10-year-old white. Do you agree with me or not? I hope some of you don't. By the way, One interesting thing about um, tasting, generic thing that applies also to wine. Make sure you distribute your port, your wine, your beverage around your the, all your um, tongue and all your mouth. We have different uh, tasting buds in different locations that get sweetness, acidity, bitterness, um, and uh, a few other things. Um, distributing the different locations. If we swallow it straight away, we're going to lose part of the experience of that port can deliver. And this complexity of flavors, it's better, um, we get it better if we have the port spread in our mouth or on our mouth, I don't know, in or out, I don't know. Um, and once we swallow it, try to 
inhalate a little bit to get um, get to use your the, to use the the aromas of the port to go to the back of your nose where you have a lot of you have other um, uh, senses to give you more information and more uh, aromas. Um, it's common that we do something like this. So we are bringing the port and the flavors to the back of your, our mouth and get a, a retronasal uh, um, aroma. Good. Is there any question, Melanie, to answer? Not now. <laughs> Not yet. Am I doing that a good job that you don't even have questions? Or are you just being lazy? You know what's interesting about this is that <laughs> you talk for an hour to your laptop, you don't even know if people are can hear you and see you. <laughs> okay. So the 10-year-old is not on the market, so I'm not going to show you any regular 75 centiliter bottle. But we are going to go to the next port, which is something very good. Very, very good. This is a um, 30-year-old white port that is served once in a... In, well, that like the commercial size for it is a 50 CL bottle that I have right here in my hand. May I leave the bottle here? In case you want to see it. And I'll get another glass. Do the same, get some water, by the way. I don't know the temperature in the UK, but um, temperatures are high. We use a lot of water, so the best way to avoid hangovers is water, keep hydrated, your body really appreciates that. Good. Another glass. Of course, that you don't have to use the same the new glasses all the time. You can reuse the same glass and refill it with a new port. No need to run to your um, glass rack and get uh, fresh glass any time that we are serving it. 30-year-old white. This is getting a little bit darker in color. A little bit darker, this 30-year-old white. Yes. Cool. This is a port that... Um, it's, it's a special port for me. It took me several months, if not more than a year, to convince my sister Claudia to bottle it. Even if we have a, a good amount of white port, old white port in stock, she believes that um, these old white ports should not be sold. They should actually be enjoyed by us and by our friends and customers and uh, um, colleagues and family, everyone in the cellar and by the glass. We should not bottle it, we should not sell it. And I told her, you know, it's not really about the financial part of it. It's also about getting the possibility for people to taste something new and show them that our history in port does not start 20 years ago when we built the new winery, when our parents built the new winery. Actually, it was like 30 years ago, not 20. Um, built the new winery and you have bigger volumes of, um, of nine, uh, 1990s port. We should also bottle sometimes one barrel or two of the older ports that we have. So after several months, Claudia accepted, and um, this is what uh, this is what we get um, of what we call a 30-year-old white, but which is actually, uh, if I'm not wrong, a 30-year, eight or 40-year-old blend. So we have older ports than what we put on the label. How did we make this? So this is a work of blending a uh, few different barrels in different percentages, from uh, barrels from different vintages, from different varieties as well, or could be, we could have the same varieties within the same barrel, but with dif different percentages. And try to create something balanced 
and consistent and that makes sense to us and really pleases us when, when we taste it. And it's the same as trying to get the best of each barrel in the right percentages. So, um, so we get the, the full, uh, the, the full, the perfect combination for what a 30 year or 40 year old white port should taste like. Color is a little bit darker, as I was saying. It's, it's getting a really um, towards like the, um, like dark orange color, almost like a light brown. I can tell you that there are some, not necessarily ours, maybe ours as well, but not necessarily, but there are some 40 year old ports, red ports, Tony ports, from other producers that have a very similar color to this. Which is, means basically that once port gets very old, it's hard to distinguish if it's a white or if it's a red by the color. It's much easier when we we smell it and we put it on our palate. Well, it's much easier, but it's not super easy as well. <laughs> So here we get a bit of more of the, um, what I find is a bit more of a, a, a caramel note, a bit more of a concentration of sugars. Almost like brown sugar. Some uh, nutty flavors as well. I think almonds are present again. A touch of spicy, almost like, almost like a nutmeg or a cinnamon. And in the palate, it's, it's long, it stays, it keeps going. Well, our suggestion to this one, dark chocolate will, with grilled nuts and ginger. Dark chocolate is, um, is one of the most difficult foods to pair with anything. And port handles the bitterness of the of the cacao of the dark chocolate because it also has some tannins red port has much more tannins than white port but then this is a full-bodied white port and um, with the bitterness of the cacao and it's not a very sweet port so with bitterness of the cacao we get a, a great balance the the grilled nuts are going to cut a little bit this bitterness from the chocolate and pull towards more of the of the um, barrel matured, cask matured notes that develop in the white port. Um, so this is our food suggestion. Dark chocolate with grilled nuts and a touch of ginger just to clean your palate. Good. Melanie, questions? Martin is asking if you think that we should invest in vintage white ports. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Martin, um, you know, the way the Douro region is still set up for white port is, is super backwards. It's, um, we are not giving the right attention to white port in the production fields, in the vineyards. And um, the legislation is not supporting the grow of uh, white grapes in the right place. So thinking about a, a white vintage port is something that was already in my mind. I'm not sure if it's going to be for you and my, and my it's going to be done during my our lives. It's probably going to take several, several decades until this is fixed. Um, what we do in our case is to select the best batches of white port and put them aside. And then will give us the possibility of uh, producing something like this 30, we're using the blend of this 30 year old white or produce something like the next port, the next white port that you're going to taste, a Colleta 1970. Um, you know, the fruit is not all the same. The, um, the location matters a lot in winemaking. And um, white, white, 
white grapes also have a huge diversity of flavors. So it's not, it, we can make great white port um, when, we, when, we, when we are fermenting it, like we do red port. So the possibility of putting this white port, young white port in bottle, like we do for the red port, for the vintage port, it's something that I would really support. And I would love to make some experiments with that. We have never done, put, and I, can, well, I mean, legally we can do it. We just cannot call it a vintage a white port. But um, it's something that uh, we do. We separate the white port, the best white port, and we put them in barrel instead of the bottle. But maybe it's an idea to, to share with Claudia and... Um, and who knows if not in two years we're not here tasting our uh, 2020 uh, vintage white port, uh, like the um, pre-release tasting with a uh, vintage uh, wine and uh, vintage port and wines uh, directly with you in the UK. Who knows? It's another idea for another tasting in the future. Is there any other question, Melanie? Another one, uh, which other parts produces the most of the uh -huh. uh, Well, I have two or three that I think are, are making great jobs. Um, not necessarily because they, they are super big, but more because they have been co very consistent along the most of the time. One is um, a producer that uh, still has the um, Quinta name on their um, trademark, which is Noval, Quinta do Noval. And um, Quinta do Noval has such a long history in port, uh, has been through many difficulties, but it's, it's a brand that um, is, is up there, really up there in terms of quality, very, very consistent, and I, I really admire. I really admire the work that um, Mr. Ramos Pinto did um, about 100 years ago, Portuguese family that make a huge effort to promote uh, port making great ports, still nowadays beautiful ports and, and uh, still wines as well. It's another company that um, I respect a lot with such a long history. Um, I think the Simintons have been uh, putting their, a lot of their passion and their heart into the, the Doro and the port production. Um, they have been able to uh, increase a lot their area of production, which for the merchants um, 100 years ago was really, really small and uh, they were just buying bulk from families like mine and many others in the Douro that we were the grape growers and the port producers. And this, some of the merchants have made the effort of uh, planting a lot of vines to be able to make uh, port from the grapes that they grow and control the quality from the beginning. Not meaning that the quality of the bulk port that they were buying was not good, but just like do the whole the, the vertical integration of the production. Um, so I guess, I mean, these two, three are, are, are people that um, inspire us um, every day. Cool. So we are done with a 30-year-old white. And now we are going to have our flagship port. Well, let me see how I'm going to explain this. Let me put this apart before. You know when you have something very special that you think, why, why don't I share this with, with our customers, with our friends? Why don't we make something very special, um, a nice bottle with a nice box and bottle just one barrel of it and people can travel 50 years in time, taste something that is um, older than some of us, or as old of some of us, or and um, inspires for our daily life, and that's what we try to do with our 1970 uh, white port that we call celebration. This is the oldest white port that we have ever bottled. We produced only one cask of it. 
and Tony at the vintage port and wine was let me see I'm gonna show this better like this. Uh, so Tony, um, since the, um, the early moment that we start sharing our idea about bottling one cask of a 1970 white port, he always told us that you want to support us, our idea, you want to buy some for his consumers, for his clients, and um, that's what we did about uh, two months ago. And we always thought that we should put a small bottle of uh, this 1970 in this uh, white port taste at home with Oscar. So you could get um, an inspiration of what's in this bottle. So get it, um, we called it the very old white. You know, there's something very cool about the year, the year of production. You won't see on this bottle 1970, only in the box. And why is that? I'll tell you. So when my great-grandparents produced this port, <clears throat> actually it was my grandfather produced this port, João. He was just a, a grape grower and winemaker selling his port in bulk to the merchants. So he did not register this port with a... Um, Port Wine Institute of the time. So nowadays we are not allowed to use 1970 on the label. We just call it very old white port. So don't I, we don't want to frustrate your expectations because it's not going to show on the bottle the 1970. What I can assure you is that this is a beautiful port from the 1970. And I hope you already have it in your glass. You know, it's color, this is interesting, because when port gets this old, and this is this one is 50 years, it starts to to show some some green hints around the, um, when, in, I mean around the, um, like the ring, uh, the external part of, like the, I don't know how to explain this. Yeah, I mean, the, um, what do you call it, how, how do you say this? Um, on the on the outer part of the glass, we can see some green hints that start to develop in this port, and that's because of the very long aging in barrel. The older it gets, the lighter, uh, lighter brown, lighter uh, color it gets, and it gets closer to 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 green. This is a bomb of flavor of aromas. It's very rich. It's not. A, it's it's the the nuttiness that it has. It's the toffee, the caramel notes, a bit spicy as well. There is no food pairing suggestion to this one. Just meditate, and um, and that's probably the best you can do with this port. has a lot of body and depth. Once you swallow, it stays and stays. I love it. I don't know about you. Yeah. Not really? That's good, that's good. That's good, ladies and gentlemen. Even better is to come to visit us. Maybe not now. Your government is not very supportive of the idea of traveling to Portugal. But in the future, things are going to change, we hope. And I really, I really hope that you are able to come. And I know that some of you are, are coming. And I know. It may take one year, two years, three years, but 
You'll be very welcome. Melanie, me, my sister, Fred, one of us is going to take care of you when you come here. Well, this is the... Um, these were the four whiteboards that we have to share with you today. We have two red boards still. We have 15 minutes left. So don't leave your questions for the last five minutes because there's going to be a few of them and I won't have that much time. Um, I promise that we'll finish this within one hour at nine. So start making those questions now. I'm going to prepare, put these bottles down and Melanie has a question. Just to finish the whites, Carface 1981 is asking, do you think Sobedo can become the leader in quality of all the white sports in Douro? It's that claim. And another one about the whites? Well, you know, you, you are the right one to answer that question. It's not me. <laughs> um, we don't, when we, when we wake up in the morning, we don't want to be the leaders of anything, honestly. I want to be, my sister, me, the family just wants to do the right things at the right time with the right. Uh, do it properly with the vines, do it properly with the, with the ports, with the barrels, do it properly with our colleagues and employees at the winery, do it right also with our customers, being them our distributor or just uh, private customers, you, and I mean, put all our soul and heart into what we do. And um, if we are going to lead anything, I mean, it's not, it's not us that are going to say that. It's going to be you and uh, our fellows that are on the other side, like you, um, I mean, I leave that question to you. Is there any other question, Lee? Not yet. Uh, that we can leave later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do we have here now? 2015 late bottle vintage. So red ports now. Switch glass now. If you haven't done it before, do it now. And maybe if there is anything of the celebration 1970, leave it for a more, some more meditation once our life is over. And don't forget, it's going to help you. I know, I know, I know. It's terrible to wash out now your mouth that you have so much, still some, so many notes and flavors of the, the celebration whiteboard. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm surprised that my daughter hasn't been knocking on the door yet. Little Halba. So late bottle vintage 2015. So one minute of your attention. It's interesting to describe weekly red ports. Red ports are made from red grapes only. The five most planted red grapes are pretty much by following this order. Toriga Franca, Tinta Rorich, also known as Tempranillo in Spain, Tinta Barroca, Toriga Nacional, number four, and then there are a few others that are um, equally percentages such as Tinta Amarela, Tinto Cão, Sousão. This would be like the top seven grapes for uh, red port. We harvest the grapes that in the old vineyards are blended in the fields. So you may have a vine of uh, variety A next to, to a vine of variety B and followed by variety C, all blended there. During the last 20 years, 15 years, we have been planting more of blocks, a block of the variety A, a block of the variety B. Winemaker likes to control more the, the evolution, the ripeness of each single variety, while the, the old people, the experienced old people would prefer to make a big field blend. And this way, in case of one of the varieties that was not performing very well, you wouldn't even notice. It was like kind of buying an insurance. Um, the, the distribution, the average production per hectare would be smoother if you have a big, um, a big block of blended varieties. So we harvest these grapes, bring them to the winery. This stem, take the stem of the bunch out, 
crush the berries and leave the skin in contact with the juice all the time. Once fermentation is at the right moment to 45, we are going to add our wine spirit and then we're going to leave the red port outside for the winter, the cold winter, to help to do a natural decantation. After that, we have to decide, do we want this port to be aged as a tony port, which will get more of a nutty character, um, lighter and um, a bit lighter in, in volume with less tannins, or do we want to make it, we want to age it for a ruby style, which is going to have a dark red color, more tannins, more body. Um, we have to decide that if you want the tonics, we have to put it in smaller casks, like this. If we want to do the ruby, we're going to put it more time in stainless steel, and if it goes to barrel, it's going to be to bigger uh, balsados. This port here, this late bottle vintage 2015, matured for 24 months in a big oak uh, bin. So it has a bit of the help of the oak to round the tannins, but we should not see in the flavor or in the aromas any oxidation resulting from the long the contact with oak. The bigger the, um, the bin is, the less exposure to oxygen it gets. Well, the color, you can see that it's um, it's like a dark cherry color, a white, a white um, a paper always helps to contrast the color. In terms of, of aromas, we, I, what I find it's, um, it's totally on the primary side. Primary means that um, aromas that come from the, the harvest, the vineyards, the vines, the grapes. Which is um, some of the cherry notes, a bit of uh, blackberries. Very fresh on the palate. Medium body. Um, it has still some some tennis to polish, but it's, it's very drinkable now. You can drink this now. You can age it for a decade. It will age well. It comes in this bottle. We are tasting today 2015. What Vintage Wine and Port has in stock is 2014, so the previous vintage. But in in few months it's going to get the, this new late bottle vintage, I guess. So it's a big change from the whites to the reds, especially because we were tasting old whites and now we are with young reds. This is um, a, a port that goes great, in my opinion, with a blue cheese or a gruyere. It has, um, it has some body, some structure. It goes, it's going to uh, uh, help to donate the um, the intense notes that we get in the blue cheese. Um, this style of port is probably the one most consumed in uh, in the United Kingdom. So you may feel more familiar to this style than to the white ports, I, I would guess. Melanie, any questions? And we're going to go to the very last port of the night, 2018 Vintage Port. So, Vintage Port is the style of port that has the longest aging potential. It's the one that, if you want to keep, if you want to give to your daughter or to your son if you want to give to a friend that just got married or is just celebrating an anniversary it's the one that um, is going to hold for many many years why 
two key reasons. One, we get the best grapes to produce it. Second, we bottle it two years after the harvest. Less than 1% of the total production of port is vintage port. It's something really, really special. It's expensive, of course. I mean, best things that always get expensive. But um, it's something that once matured for some years in bottle, it's beautiful. The history of uh, vintage port is um, is very very long. Historically, you know the um, port was shipped in cask in barrel to England and bottled in England, and um, the English would uh, would have among the biggest stocks of vintage port in the world. It's still a pleasure to me. To go when I go to London and I have the possibility of uh, participating in a tasting organized by the Port Forum and uh, taste old vintage port properly matured in at the right temperature and um, get to discover to know a bit more about my homeland about uh, the Doro Valley so this one This is a 75 CL bottle of it. I guess you may be able to see it. We bottled this a couple of months ago. So this is the first time that I'm showing this port outside of our family uh, business. Uh, so let's, let's taste it together, let's discover it together. The color is um, it's a dark purple uh, red color. That's how I would see it. And the nose is very fresh, very winy. It's still uh, you can al almost smell the the, the freshly crushed um, berries. A bit of flower notes as well, like violets or a touch of um, orange, orange flower. Well. For this one, you need you need blue cheese, and you have great blue cheese in in the UK. That's what you need. It's it's rich, it's intense, and it has already some roundness. You can see that. I mean, this needs time. You need to be patient with it. But has um has a lot of things going on, and that's the beauty of port, because most of the time we don't get like plain simple uh, flavors you get a lot of diversity a lot of things going on that make us think and and go back to our memories for to place these flavors what a new, what a contrast To the 30-year-old white, for instance, or even to the 8-year-old reserve white. That's the diversity that our our land, our vineyards give to us. A lot of things change when you are located with your vines at uh, river level, which is about 100 meters above sea level, or when you go to the top of the hill at 650 meters. It's then all that nuances that we get if it's facing north or facing south, if it has, um, if it's planted on a terrace, which is like a kind of a stairs, if you look in, in um, if you look at the hill, or if you play, plant them continuous, every little detail changes. And that's what the French call terroir. 
and that's what we need to we need to be very aware when you are getting the grapes into wi our winery to decide what's the best that I can get from these grapes and from this vineyard. And that's where I think Claudia makes um, a great job. Well, we are getting close to the end. Melanie is doing this. Tell Should me, you Melanie. Ask, is the sweetness of the ruby compared to the white parts to the sugar content in the grapes or something in the aging process? Jesse, the sweetness is pretty much the same. Your perception of the sweetness is going to be influenced by the tannins that we have in the red port and that we do not have in the white or having a much lower level in the white grapes. Tannins are bitter. They would be similar to what cacao is. Cacao is very rich in tannins. And the more tannins we get in our wine, and this port, vintage port, 2018, and the previous red port we tasted, late bottle vintage, in a little bit lower scale, but they have a lot of tannins, and they will compensate more the sweetness that we have in the in the in the back. White port, white grapes have much less tannins, and we'll get more of the exposure of the of the of the sugar of the fructose also with the aging in barrel sugars depending on the temperature in your cellar but sugars tend to caramelize and they get a bit more easy to recognize and that happens when port either red or white matures in in, in barrel that's what um, that's why it's normal to associate a bit of the caramel notes to older ports. Any other question, Melanie? BMH Oh, Ben Reed. <laughs> Hello, Ben. Good night. How are you doing? He's asking how do you feel this LBB 2016 compares to 2003? I find it. <laughs> It's a tricky question, and you're mean. Um, well, we don't have uh, the concentration in this 2015 that we, we had in 2003. The years were different. Uh, 2003 was extremely hot year, and we were putting all our best grapes into this uh, 2003 uh, LBV. For this uh, 2015, we were going uh, to grapes that uh, had a lot of concentration, but we want to make it more approachable from the beginning. I can also tell you, I'm not positive about this, but I think the 2003 matured for a much shorter period of time in barrel, meaning that the tannins were a bit more tense and, um, and present when we bottled it. 2015, because of the two years in Balseiro, they get more soft and round and more approachable now. So um, I see this LBV as something more to drink uh, in the next uh, decade, rather than 2003 that is still uh, showing great. Okay. Mark is asking, what is the next to the finish? <laughs> ah, this, these things? Okay. So this is a measure for five liters. Once the liquid gets in here, it would come out. So you know that this level would be 5 liters. Why is this important? Fortification. To add the right amount of aguardente, of uh, wine spirit, when you are making the port. Also, when you do a wrecking of the port. So take the wine out of this barrel and move it to another barrel. Or just basically oxidizing or exposing to some oxygen the, the port. Let me just get the laptop and show you what we have on the lower part. So do you see this uh, valve here? You would like open the valve, get the port here and use the funnel that is there to put it on the top. 
so basically it's what we and this would be 20 liters and I think this is also 20 liters but with um, with the measure here in this tiny square by the way let's see what my father has in aging in here so this is like the private collection of my father this is a uh, 87 87 can you read it and this is a uh, 88 good 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 and in the holes back there you have some more ports and you have also some more in there and you have some more barrels in there and that's Melanie there <laughs> so you have to see the whole thing cool everybody's happy and saying hello and thank you <laughs> wow good to know that you are happy um, I'm very happy as well. I think Melanie is also happy. Um, we will do more of this in the future, I'm sure, because we are having a lot of fun. I think that you are also having fun. So if at some point in the future, another suggestion for a taste at home with Oscar shows up on your inbox, don't delete it straight away. Just give a second thought. We'll bring you new things for you to taste. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening and um, see you soon. We will see each other soon. Bye-bye.